I believe that this is a weekend where the Lord is going to do some really cool things. He's going to stir some things in your heart. And those of you who haven't felt it, I believe that he is going to stir it. He is the one. He is the one that blows on the embers. Okay. And that's also what we want to do today. When I was asking the Lord about uh, today and what he wanted me to know about Pentecost, I heard the word infuse. So I decided to look it up, and infuse means to fill or pervade, to instill a quality in someone or something, to soak in a liquid. Isn't that cool? To extract flavor or healing properties. I want that to settle inside of you. Without the Holy Spirit given to us by our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, we would have no church. We would have no evangelism. We would have no supernatural revelation, no impact, no miracles, no healing, no expression of the power of God. Jesus builds children in order to partner to bring kingdom and advance kingdom here on the earth, okay? My husband and I, we own a business locally, and we have three children. Right now, they're 18, 16, and 13, and although my husband and I own the business, our kids get to benefit from the business, but I cannot imagine handing that business over to them right now. Because they don't have the heart for our clients that we have. They may run the business into the ground rather than actually moving the business forward. But our kids right now receive the benefit of the business. They receive the benefit of our business. They live in a home. They eat food, pretty good food. Unless I don't cook, then it's not so good. Even when I do cook, it's not always that good. But they still receive the benefit. They are beneficiaries of the business. There will come a day when it would be great. We would love to pass our business on to our kids. But there are some things that are going to need to happen before we can do that. They are going to need to be infused with the same values, the same heart, the same strength, the same endurance as we have for our clients. Our children are going to need to be infused with that same thing that we carry for our clients. Because until that happens, they actually can't move our business forward in the way that we desire for our business to move forward. Our children receive the benefit. It is part of their inheritance right now. But they do not have the ability to participate in our business. I want you to think about that. In the Old Testament, there were two different things. There was an inheritance, and an inheritance was doled out to every child But the birthright blessing was doled out to the firstborn. And the birthright blessing was a passing on to the Father's kingdom, of the Father's kingdom, of the Father's business. It happened, David and Solomon passed it on. That was a birthright blessing that was poured out to the firstborn. The story of Jacob and Esau we're very familiar with. The story of Jacob and Esau, Esau came in, he was weary from the field, he, his brother cooked a red stew, and he said, I'm weary, give me some stew, and Jacob said, exchange me your inheritance, and in that moment, he exchanged his inheritance for a momentary, a fleshly desire that he had. And we know that it goes on, and he also exchanged not only his inheritance, but later he exchanged his birthright blessing. Fast forward 
to Matthew chapter 4 and the temptation of Jesus after he fasted in the wilderness for 40 days, the tempter came to him and began to speak an exchange for Jesus. And in that exchange, I know I've heard a lot of different stories about that passage and the temptation of Jesus and the different temptations that Satan came to him with. But ultimately, Ultimately, what was happening in that moment was Satan was trying to have him exchange his birthright blessing for a momentary satisfaction of the flesh. But what did Jesus do? After it happened three times, The last time the devil took him to a high mountain, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Pretty powerful. Side note, that that phrase, fall down and worship me, it wasn't just a bow down. Satan in that moment wanted the presence of who he was to have Jesus fall down before him. Like when the glory of the Lord is so strong that not even the priests could stand in order to minister. All they could do was fall down. That was what Satan wanted from Jesus. And so he was introducing this exchange to happen And Jesus answered him and said, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Jesus never speaks the lie. He never exchanges his birthright or his inheritance with Satan. Although that opportunity is given to him three times, he doesn't ever do it. Why is that important to us? And how in the world... (laughs) Does Pentecost even have anything to do with that? In Hebrews chapter 12, it speaks of how we participate in the birthright blessing of Jesus. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is marked before us, Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising shame, he sat down at the right hand of God. That is why he is able now, when he took his rightful place at the right hand of God, that was why he was able, just like I was sharing our oldest son If he takes over our business, he will be able to bring in whoever he wants to advance our business. When Jesus sat at the right hand of God, he became the one who was able to bring in brothers and sisters. He was the firstborn. We are all behind him. Here's what happens for us. In verse 14, it says, pursue peace with all people. And holiness, without which no one will see God, looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any bitter root spring up causing trouble. By this many have become defiled. What happens is we carry this inheritance and we carry this birthright blessing in Jesus. But when things like bitterness or peace or holiness When Satan comes and tries to have us exchange those things, we choose bitterness and we let go and we release that inheritance and that birthright blessing. Okay? The inheritance for us is salvation. It's doled out to each one. But the birthright blessing means that we get to partner with Jesus in advancing our Father's kingdom. 
when I was uh, 40, I know some of you thought I'm only 18, but <laughs> you're wrong. Um, when I was 40, Joanne invited me to go to a conference, and I, it scared, scared me. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I actually paced around our swimming pool saying, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And um, next thing I knew, I found myself on an airplane. I landed. I thought, I think I need to get back on an airplane and go back home. Um, I went to the first day. I walked in a room. The people were really weird. And I thought, these are not my people. Uh, I have no idea what closets these people came out of. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm here. I went back. I spent some time with the Lord. Um, I asked him if I could go home. I was pretty sure he said no. And so I went to day two and day three. And on day three, I was standing there, and the speaker was asking the Lord to move on new leaders who had never experienced the Holy Spirit before. And I felt like he was speaking a different language because I knew that I had the Holy Spirit inside of me, but he was kind of a silent partner um, in me. And those of you who are married, do you know that silent partners in marriage, it just doesn't work? Um, and so the Holy Spirit had been a silent partner for many years, for about 40. And um, apparently year 40, he felt like he needed to move. What happened was I was standing back in the back, and my legs began to shake. And I told them to stop, and they wouldn't stop shaking. So I looked to Joe, and I looked to my other friend, Michelle, and I said, why, why, what, what is happening with my legs? Why are my legs shaking? I can't stop them. And they got really strangely excited, and they said, <laughs> you need to go up there. Do you hear what he's saying? He's saying that the Lord is bringing new leaders in this movement that the Holy Spirit is going to fall on people who have never experienced him before. They didn't say all that. But they said, you need to get up there. So I, with my shaking, strange legs, walked all the way up front, and I was about 15 feet from the stage. I had no idea what to expect. I just knew everyone in the room except for me was really weird. And I just stood there with open heart going, Lord, whatever you have for me, I want it. I am so hungry. I am so desperate for you. I cannot go on unless I have whatever the more looks like, whatever it is. I want it. All I remember was the speaker said something. Um may have been power of God, fire of God. I don't really know. All I know is nobody was near me. And I flew back, and I landed on the floor, and I shook for a long, long, long time. <laughs> and my mind was having trouble with my heart. <laughs> Because my mind was trying to tell my heart, stop doing this. What is going on with you? And I, even in that moment on the floor, I was asking the Lord, why is this taking place? What purpose does this even have? Because I didn't understand. I'll tell you what happened is when I flew back, it wasn't that day, because that day I was dragged off the floor. But when I finally got on a plane and I flew back home, I went home and I told my family, I can't go back. I can't go back to the Christianity that I was walking in before. I'm not going back. And I don't care what I look like, and I don't care what people say about me. All I want 
is to pursue kingdom. It is all I want. I tell you that because there is a significance that happens when we get filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a water bottle. How many of raise your hand if you would say there's water in this water bottle? Thank you. Those of you who, yes, <laughs> there is water in this water bottle, <laughs> except for the little bit that I drank. Well, hang on. I just wrote T on a label. So now this water bottle doesn't have water, it has tea. How many of you believe me that this actually has tea in it now? Raise your hand if you believe. Just because I labeled this tea, how many of you believe it's tea? None of you. None of you are raising your hand. Because you know that tea looks a certain way, carries certain properties, and this doesn't look like tea, and it doesn't carry the properties of tea, and it has no caffeine in it, which that's why I drink tea. It does not matter if we would like to label ourselves follower of Christ believer of Christ, Christian. If we put a label on us, but nothing changes on the inside, we have a problem. We have a problem. What happened was the disciples on Pentecost, something was infused to them so that they would resemble Jesus, so that they would have the power and the strength and the authority that Jesus had, and only Jesus can give it. I'm going to invite Amanda, if she's still here, and Aaron up. So that was a tea packet that I just put inside of this tea. And much like Jesus, he likes to shake us a little bit. If I were to tell you now that this is tea and it has and carries the property of tea, how many of you would believe me? I want you to stand. What happened on Pentecost what happened that day, what happened for me on my 40th birthday, and I understand the significance of 40, it's not lost on me. Every way that he needed his people who call them children, who say, I am a follower of Jesus, on the day of Pentecost, he filled them with what they did not carry. We live in a town of hungry people who are desperate to not encounter a label, a title that we've put on ourselves. They don't need that. They already see that. The world already has that. We live in a region, we live in a nation, we live in a world. People are desperate. They're desperate for the real. They're desperate that those who call themselves Jesus lovers, Jesus followers, would actually have something in them that looks like Jesus. 
that when they encounter us, that they would encounter the real deal. For me at age 40, that wasn't the last time that I encountered power of the Lord. It has happened several times since then. I guess because I'm a hard case. That's not true. We see in Acts that it didn't happen only once, but there were multiple times when God encountered because he is wanting to fill us up with more and more and more of him so that we can advance the kingdom. I'm gonna ask our team, our Agape team to come up if you are able, but also the ministry team here. We are gonna pray that the Lord would begin to move in a mighty way. And if you are hungry for more of him, and if you like me start to feel the weird shaking in your legs and you do not know what it is about, I wanna invite you to come up. So Father God, right now, Pentecost weekend, we celebrate you and we celebrate what you did on that weekend, how you infused your spirit into everyone in that room and they were forever changed. No more fear of man, no more fear of any religious culture, no more fear of walking in power and authority. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would move in this place that your spirit like a rushing wind would come in and would stir up our hearts. Fan into flame, fan into flame, God, fan into flame. I pray for broken inheritances, places where the enemy has lied to you and told you that there is no more, that you've lost it. I saw earlier that God was ripping journal pages out, journal pages that have been written, that speak of times where the wounds are so deep. He is ripping those out today and he wants to encounter you and speak his life and his love. So Holy Spirit, we give the rest of this time to you and we say, have your way. Fill us up, fill us up with fresh fire, fill us up with fresh power, fill us up with fresh love. Encounter each one of us in the way that only you can, Lord, only you can.